turbulent, powerful and extremely varied, the atmosphere on Venus is proving to be even more complex and dynamic than first thought. This is one of the essential first conclusions from ESA's Venus Express, in orbit around the planet now for over a year. The mission's latest findings are published in Nature. The first mission dedicated to the study of the composition and dynamics of the planet's atmosphere, this European spacecraft has identified broad meteorological regimes, all influenced by the gigantic hurricane-like vortices at the poles. One of the things that we really have seen is that uh, the complexity of the vortices around the South Pole that we have seen now, also the, the dynamics, the complexity and the time variability, and actually that they are not stable, but they are moving both in, in, in shape and in position and in size fairly rapidly with time. This is, this is clearly a new thing that we did not know. From these double-eyed vortices swirling the atmosphere around the planet in just a couple of days to smoother streams at mid-latitudes and wave-dominated phenomena at lower ones, these regimes are surprisingly clearly separated. The low latitudes um, have um, a much more stormy kind of appearance, turbulent and clumpy clouds and um, uh, chaotic behavior in the atmosphere. Whereas uh, once you get uh, nearer to the pole, but not all the way to the dipole, uh, the flow becomes much more laminar and, and is just flowing around in a, in a, in a very uh, organized way. And the, the, the remarkable thing is the barrier between the two is very, very sharp. Uh, something is happening at, at, at middle latitudes that causes the, basically the physics of, of the way the atmosphere is circulating to change in terms of the, the detailed we the weather, if you like. The spacecraft's elongated orbit has allowed its instruments, notably the VMC camera working in the ultraviolet range and the Virtus imaging spectrometer, to obtain long-shot views of the planet's weather patterns, mosaics showing the different types of cloud formation and wind speeds, varying according to altitude and latitude. Here you see uh, in the equatorial region, you see the uh, so-called mottled clouds, chaotic features which are, uh, which are indicative of the convection which is, uh, which is happening approximately in uh, the tropical latitudes of Venus. Then it, uh, these chaotic motions and mottled clouds, they give way to uh, more regular streaky features that gives you about that the uh, flow is more laminar and uh, these streaks, they actually they give you the direction of the flow in the Venus atmosphere. Then uh, going further to the south, you enter the uh, so-called white band, which is actually uh, lots of haze material, which is above the absorbing cloud. And it's very variable feature. And sometimes you see that during a couple of days, uh, this uh, boundary of this uh, bright band, it can expand by uh, thousands of kilometers. So this is very dynamical region. Venus Express has obtained much information on the composition and physical processes active in the atmosphere and notably has been able to measure the loss of molecules stripped away by the solar wind. What we're looking for in particular is um, the loss of water from Venus and uh, the heaviest part of water is the oxygen so the loss of that's particularly important and these are actually uh, oxygen ions O plus uh, plotted on a scale here where the red is a large amount and blue is a small amount. And you see it looks like a plume of uh, oxygen being torn away from the planet and blown off into space and lost. And we believe and we're trying to prove that uh, this oxygen mainly started out um, in the early days of Venus as water vapor when Venus had a lot more water than it does now. And uh, the water is easily dissociated in the upper atmosphere to, to H and O. And if the O can escape, the H certainly can. So this is how Venus lost its water and why it's such a dry planet compared to the Earth these days. Rates of oxygen depletion are still being calculated, but some tentative conclusions are being made. There's so, so few water on the planet that if we would just apply the current fluxes of the water loss, we will lose this water in a very short, geologically short time. So it seems that uh, Venus received some water through the impacts from comets or from other bodies and probably received within the last few hundred million years. Venus Express has also probably brought the final answer to the controversy about the presence of lightning.
We have seen from measurements by the magnetometer uh, we have signatures uh, which can basically only have been generated by lightning and this is, of course quite frequently. So this is, a, this is a, has been suspected in the past and that has also important implications in the chemistry in particular uh, because lighting is a source of energy input and, and, and a catalyst to, uh, to uh, chemical reactions. The Venusian picture is still far from complete. The Venus Express mission, which has now been extended to the end of 2008, is pursuing its harvest of data, allowing scientists to better understand the precise reasons why, compared to our planet, Venus has become so inhospitable. One of the reasons we're doing this is to get a better handle on our understanding of the Earth. I mean, Venus is a wonderful lab for the Earth because it's almost identical. I mean, it really is a twin planet. You know, they're two almost identical planets very close to each other. Um, and uh, not only that, but the kinds of things that we're really worried about on the Earth, like greenhouse warming, are, you know, clearly demonstrated on Venus and to a much greater degree. So everything we learn about Venus is, is, has a lesson for us.